Hello everyone, I'm Marlene Wenger and this is the Elementum Art Podcast. On this show, we speak with artists and critics and deep dive into the ethics and aesthetics of the new power of art in the digital realm. In the first edition of the Elementum Art Podcast, I had the pleasure to meet Jonas Baumann, a painter and digital artist based in Basel, Switzerland. We spoke about how the digital and the analog sphere merge in his work and how different motives and ideas can easily travel from one to the other world. He will also reveal why it is interesting for him to be represented on the Elementum platform and what he thinks about the current NFT hype. Welcome to the new era of art. Enjoy curated and limited edition art and start your personal collection today. Elementum, your new home for discovering art. Okay. Um, hello, everybody. We are here in Basel at Kazerne in the studio of Jonas Bowman. This is the first of a series of talks that we're going to do as a podcast series for Elementum. My name is Marlene. And um, yes, I'm very happy to be here. <laughs> Maybe I quickly give a, like a really quick introduction of who you are and what you do so you study you you study the uh, design mm. no. illustration illustration yeah. design and design right mm -hmm. and um yeah you have exhibited like um, many places in basel and geneva and also in berlin i think you did it. and maybe two things to mention that are would be interesting is that you were selected for the best animated music videos of um, at the Stuttgart International Festival of Animated Film mm -hmm. in 2018, which is interesting, maybe in the context, we can go back to that later. And also what I wanted to mention that um, at the moment there is a piece of you um, called Towels, which is visible at the, at the screen outside the Congress Center in Basel um, as part of the festival by Video City. So if those of you who are in Switzerland and happen to be here, walk by um, the Messeplatz, you will see Jonas's work. So. And today um, we wanted to talk about um, with you about your presentation uh, of, of five of your works on the Elementum platform. And um, yeah, I maybe I, we just dive right in and talk about um, what you are representing there and um, what it means and do a little uh, work discussion to start with. Cool. <laughs> um, okay, my first work, I guess we talk about yes. um, the uh, tubes. The hanging tubes. The right. Hanging tubes. Mm -hmm. Okay, what do you want to know? <laughs> so this is what the first work that was actually put on, on the on the Elementum. Yeah, uh, I right? believe, yes. Yeah. And it is um, it has, it has a landscape format, so mm -hmm. uh, I have it right in front of me. Mm -hmm. And we see um, uh, everlasting sunrise, so the mm -hmm. sun doesn't move, and we see these hanging tubes. And only a gentle wind um, makes them come alive from time to time. Mm -hmm. And it has this very calm expression. Yeah, and... Uh, Actually, um, I see myself also as a painter. I mean, I'm a pain painter and this one captures the spirit of my paintings quite good, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you see that. I think it, it becomes pretty obvious when you look at that, when you look at this animation. And what I find really fascinating about your work in general, but I think it's pretty obvious in, the, in the, this work, is that it has this... Um, it, it, it has this calmness and it works between the media. So it's, it's, it has this painterly character, but it's also a moving image and it, an animated image at the same time. So it's kind of in between. It's kind of a hybrid form, maybe. Mm -hmm. Do you agree to that? Yeah, absolutely. And um, it's good you mentioned that because I always like this hybridness of mm -hmm. like everything, like on a conceptual level, but also between my paintings and between my digital work. So I use mm. stuff from the, like the, the real physical world and put it in my paintings and vice versa. So yeah, it's always like on the edge, mm. you can mm. say. Yeah. And, and does it... So can everything travel from the digital to the physical and back? Or Yeah, I have no rules about that. So 
whatever comes to my mind and whatever I can use in my canvas. And I think, okay, this um, this uh, object I might use in my kitchen work, so I just use it and then I go back maybe and paint like a tube. So actually the tubes, they started on the canvas as paintings. Mm -hmm. And then I was very interested um, in this body tension they have. And I wanted to see like um, what it looks like if you if you render this and like physically correct rendering of how they hang and mm -hmm. what is the body tension uh, about them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I experimented with that and uh, so tubes. I mean, it's not a series, but tubes one mm -hmm. <laughs> now is on Elementum and I'm quite happy about it. Mm -hmm. That's really nice. I I like the physicality about this, like al although it's 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 um I don't know it's it's an artificial object, but it has this kind of bodyness to it. I don't know yeah, how right. to explain. Yeah, yeah. You you can almost feel the mm. weight, or you, it it makes it visible how it moves and how it is moved, how it has a weight and it's hanging there, and it's kind of you feel the gravity of the of the sculpture somehow, mm. which is really nice. And what I also like about it. Is the there? There's like obviously art historical reference that you put in there quite um, how do you say um, quite, that are quite obvious maybe, but also it has this super light and super soft humor, mm -hmm. I would say, mm -hmm. or self irony that is that comes with it um, that I see in this work because it's. Yeah, I don't, yeah, it's maybe a little hard to explain, but I think it's really obvious. Would you agree to that? That it, that it, it's also playing with this. Yeah, that absolutely. That it wants to be a little fun mm -hmm. and it's fun. Yeah, I like to um, not make it clear if it should be or not, mm -hmm. because it's just it's just what I I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's very subtle. It's not. Yeah, right. It's not aggressively yeah. like no, no. in your face. It's no, like no. very on the subtext. The funny thing is, I just do what I do so and. This comes out, so I guess it's a representation of my character. <laughs> but actually, a fun fact is that I this is actually not really an animation because okay. it is really physical rendered. So I can I can make the wind like in this world, mm -hmm. and the animation comes from that. So I cannot oh. I cannot um, control everything. So the wind just does what what it does. So mm -hmm. I have to number crunch a lot and. Mm -hmm. That is also something that I like because on the computer you can control like everything, mm -hmm. and uh, if you work like that with physical physicality, um, you have to give a little bit um, away to the computer itself. Yeah, so you get, you have this this aspect of arbitrariness actually. Absolutely, that you yeah. kind of mm -hmm. need to control a bit. Mm -hmm. and that's very nice. I like that. Yeah. yeah, and from that from that first work. Um, maybe the others developed when I see this, right? There are virtual sculptures, I think three of them, two? Um, three, but this one, two, and four, I guess, is mm -hmm. two, so three is not ready yet, <laughs> which makes no sense, but uh, that's how it work. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Okay, and, and these are um, also... When you look at it at, at the first moment, maybe you, you won't even notice, like on a, or when you walk by this painting on a screen in a gallery space, may, maybe you wouldn't even notice, or at, for some at least, that they are actually moving, or that they have like small elements um, that are moving in the sculpture, in the animated sculpture. And um, so we have the same subtleness here. And or maybe the one, the, the one, which one is the one that moves a little bit more? Oh yeah, this is. I guess this is number four. No, number two, with the with the finger. Yes. This one. Yes. Then you have to look that. Mm -hmm. So, would you say that this um, is like a development, or that, that this came out of the, this first um, experimentation in the tubes, or how do we go about when you create these uh, virtual sculptures? Uh, good question. Well, actually, the sculptures they started in painting. Mm -hmm. So I started, I don't know, maybe 2012 with the first sculpture in acrylic. And then from there, I went to almost um, sculpture number 50 right now in mm -hmm. oil. So I have 
I have done a lot of sculpture and paintings and around 2014, I guess, I played around with this uh, rendering program on my computer. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, well, I was like, why don't do sculptures on the computer as well? And of course, what can you do on the computer? What you can't on the canvas is you can animate or you can mm -hmm. bring motion to it. And that's when I started to animate my sculptures. And at that time, I wanted to have them like, um, like paintings of sorts. So that you, when you first see it on the screen, you have, mm -hmm. you have the feeling like it doesn't move. It's just a picture. Mm -hmm. And just on the second thought, uh, step, uh, you see that there's actually something moving or there is more than just just mm -hmm. the the image so there's an, an animation so mm -hmm. again i like to play with what is animation what is sculpture what is uh, painting and the static image mm -hmm. and of course now i do like subtle animations and then i experiment what can i do to i mean to bring more motion to the image mm -hmm. but i but the feeling right now is that I, I stay with uh, rather subtle stuff and not go like crazy mm -hmm. flashy effects and stuff like mm -hmm. that. I, I think there is enough of that already <laughs> in sense. the internet and in the world. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and like this, when, when we have the subtle movement, it stays in this range, I think. Like, and the artwork stays in this hybrid form, but it can actually be, you could actually imagine it as being a painting or being mm -hmm. a sculpture or being an animated form. And it just it just perpetuates between all the different I don't know. It can I see that it can manifest itself on any kind of surface that we give it a moment like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a, a, actually I like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the, the and you you still paint, of course, right? Absolutely. I try to every day, but I can't at the moment. Mm -hmm. But um I mean painting is I mean, if you ask if I'm a painter or a digital artist, so uh, today I say I'm a painter, tomorrow I say I'm a digital artist, so uh, <laughs> maybe I don't even care anymore and yeah. I just do what I do. And if I cannot work on my computer screen, I work on my paintings mm -hmm. and vice versa. So it's actually a, a fruitful tension that, uh, ins that improves my art, I guess, yeah. or that I can, can um, use mm -hmm. to make uh, good images or good paintings. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Um, maybe before we go more into detail about this, that we already talked about the techniques in digital and analog, um, there's one last series, which uh, or one last work, uh, which is the table series. Maybe you want to say something about that. It's the only image that is not, that doesn't move. Right. This is actually a just <laughs> JPEG. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering um, if this works too. So my table series, uh, you notice everything is a series I do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like this. I like to work in series. Mm -hmm. um, and also this started as a painting and then I did like two um, tables in, in my, on my computer. And one was uh, actually a, a program that is like real time program and mm -hmm. like a computer game, but it wasn't a game. It just uh, is too complex now to describe everything. But I wasn't really happy with that because it was everything. It was too complex and and it was in a way I was I wanted to go. So I made just the opposite and made a, like a static image. Mm -hmm. And I was really confident with it. And it is also an, in uh, on Elementum, and it's actually a, a series of three, or I mean, uh, mm -hmm. you can buy it three times. It's yeah. a series, yeah. And uh, about that, I'm not really sure where I go with that, mm -hmm. to be honest. It's maybe an experiment. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so I, I'm sure I will paint a lot more tables, but that's just what it is to, to do now. Mm -hmm. For me here, what, what I see in this work, um, maybe more than in the others, or I don't know, just a, a feeling that I have, that you feel the design aspect, of course, in the still lives. Mm -hmm. and, and it could be, I think it was also like um, print in a magazine as like an editorial. Um, at the same time, but, but of course the still life 
as it is here, is also a very classical art historical subject. Mm -hmm. And and you played with this as well, that you have a still life that is, again, playing with this really strange, tiny um, elements. For example, here you have like the sculpture of, a, what is it, a little dinosaur that yeah, is actually lizard. a lizard, that it looks that it would be of clay. Yeah. So the, you have the materiality mm -hmm. of the clay, and then you have like the little matchbox mm -hmm. with your logo on it, and and this kind of little balls that come from the the plant, I guess, mm -hmm. the red, or maybe it's pepper. I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, it's pepper. <laughs> <laughs> it's rose pepper. So you you take this element of the still life, which is usually like these very serious flowers or or like food on the table, and has this memento mori kind of seriousness to it. And you take it and you, you add some little distortions with these kind mm. of funny objects, which I really like, when, when, which kind of distort again this historical stillness of the, of the still life. Mm. It kind of breaks the seriousness of it. Yeah. And uh, actually, the funny thing about that is that I, um, I also used with AI text programs, I mm -hmm. played around with it. And then I thought, what, what, uh, what is going to happen if I describe the work to this program, what comes mm -hmm. back? So I wrote uh, to this AI, AI mm -hmm. um, program that you can do in the internet, it's open source, described my work and it came back uh, like a story about a cave. So the mm -hmm. first word was the cave. Mm -hmm. I guess it's because of the lizard, I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I liked that very much so that I... <laughs> Again, the random factor. Right. That you give it to the AI that she decides what the So what I the don't have to come up with a title. So <laughs> now I have the title, it's... It's called the cave, and also this title mm -hmm. does something to the image yeah. what I kind of like. So mm -hmm. nice, yeah, nice. it's like an experiment. Yeah, it's really cool. I think uh, I would like to see more of this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nice. <laughs> yeah. So um, maybe we can go more on uh, to the other level of of talking about a little bit how how it is interesting for you as an artist to be. Um, mm -hmm to be on the Elementum website with your works and to sell them, to sell works that are actually in, uh, on the blockchain. And to talk a little bit up about this technology since it's like, it's, it's really getting hyped in the last two, two couple of months. And uh, yeah, to talk about the potential, maybe also a little bit about the problems and how you how you see, how, uh, see it from your perspective maybe. So what's, maybe you could start with saying, why it is interesting for you to be on, on a site like Elementum with your work? Well, of course, uh, as a digital artist, I, I'm very happy to be on this site because it's the first time I can actually uh, present them as, as a unique work. Mm -hmm. And it's not like just a JPEG that floats around in the internet. Um, and I'm not quite sure where it goes, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Because, as you said, there uh, is a hype for sure. And there are many works now on the internet and also many works where I don't know why they are being sold for that kind of <laughs> money. <laughs> yeah. we, I think we're talking about the people with Christie's for almost $70 million dollars mm -hmm. in March, middle of March, like very recently. Yeah. Yeah, so this are, this, um, there are many people like they have a background in like um, conceptual art or from the game industry and their work that it shows that they um, have topics like that. So you have the beautiful woman that is in the perfect lighting mm -hmm. or a spaceship, a spacecraft landing on a, on a foreign moon, stuff like that. And it's quite honest, a bit same-ish here and there. So strange stuff and I don't know um, how sustainable this is mm -hmm. because it is so much and uh, I think we have to have more unique work and that is less interchangeable mm -hmm. um, to actually sustain that hype I yeah, guess so yeah I'm, I'm I wonder where it goes but at the moment I think uh, it's a hype a bit more. Mm -hmm. I just think it's that that will be super super vital, like super important to to also break with the misconception. I mean, that was the problem with NFT art that is hyped now. 
that the other part of the art world or people who are, don't know anything about it and when they see it they think it's it's really only focusing on gif gif art and mm. screen, like art that looks like screensavers or or something like that you make for a video game or something like this but that the range is actually super diverse and that there are very many people coming from very different directions like you like um painters that work digitally now or people from the gaming industry, people from design, people from... So it's just a very diverse background that that is coming together here. But I think it has to be visible also in the quality that is put out there and maybe that we... that it is important to have different kind of, of um, ways to show that, as you said. Yeah, you see it from the perspective of a curator, yeah, so. of course. And um, yeah, <laughs> I yeah I baffled. I don't know why you would. Uh, I mean, people is the third. I, I read the third um, uh, richest uh, um, artist alive. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's not even an artist, <laughs> honestly. No, come on, we can say that here. I mean, we have Gerhard Richter, we have people, and we have I don't know. It's it's. I'm insane, honestly. Yeah. I can really say that here. I, I this is my this is my opinion. I would say that publicly even. I, I think it's crazy that this can happen and so many people were like, What is happening? Why is this happening? Why can something that is so sexist and, and so bad in quality even sell on Christie's and why does Christie's hype this kind of art that would never, never, ever in anybody's mind be be on there be, if it were not for this technology. Mm -hmm. And also that is very strange that you somehow link the quality to this, or that is this somehow linked, but of course any kind of, of, of thing or media can be put on a blockchain. So it's not related. So the blockchain is not actually the media, or right. the, the NFT is not, it's not the media, and that also has to be discussed. Yeah, you're and right. There are even YouTube videos like, like mm -hmm. strange, uh, strange uh, guys sing a strange song, or mm -hmm. Five seconds sold for fifteen thousand, mm -hmm. or uh, a meme on Imager, mm -hmm. yeah, or the the the, the cat, the nyan -nyan cat, <laughs> <laughs> sold for six hundred thousand. I mean, it's just a gif with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm baffled. I don't know where it goes. It's all I can say about this. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. I think it will. Yeah, as you say, it will be a hype, and and now that this is is it's possible to do that, people will talk about it. But I think it's very important to also have yeah high higher quality art who who actually deals with it. Yeah, that's being, why I'm on elementum. That's why you're on elementum. I think that's perfect, and I think that's also a perfect uh, end word of this podcast. And um, yeah, I mean, we could talk a lot more, and we might continue that on or offline. But I want to thank you very much that you were part of this first talk. Thank you. This was the Elementum Podcast. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Visit us at www.elementum.art and start your own art collection today. Thank you for tuning in and see you next time.